Originally from Canada, she's quickly become a huge hit on the UK comedy scene, so much so we've refused to let her ever go home. It is the one and only Catherine Ryan. <laughs> First of all, uh, you're kind of an honorary Brit now, aren't you? How long have you been... Uh, you've lived over here since, is it 2008 you first came over? Yes, I moved here properly in 2008, though you mustn't call me a Brit around my father, Why who not? is from the Republic of Ireland. Oh. Wouldn't like it. Wouldn't like it. He's very, like, cork. He's a, I'm a cork girl to him. So you're, But you live here, though, in, in the UK. Don't tell him that, either. He will find me. Oh. Um, <laughs> and he'll Conor McGregor on you. Yes. Yeah. You know what they're like. Um, no, I love the UK. My daughter was born in London, and, I mean, I just... I think in Canada, I wasted a lot of time making friends with strangers, mm -hmm. and that made my day go, you know, really slowly. Yeah. But in London, you just get to your business, and no one talks to you. Yeah. <laughs> It's much more, yeah, it's, it's kind of a sensible way to live. It's much more straightforward. No one asks how your mum is doing. Yeah. Uh, and do you, uh, are there things then about the UK that still delight you, that you haven't got used to yet? Are there still things, any things that shock you about the way we are, apart from our lack of friendliness? I mean, I think your vocabulary is definitely, I'm from a garbage town, like true trash. Yeah. And so it's amazing that I can even walk in a straight line. Like, I don't know how I got here. <laughs> My daughter, though, will just throw out terms like, She'll say, she was swimming and she said, Mummy, prepare my towel. I was like, <laughs> prepare your towel. <laughs> and then I was crying about another failed relationship, you know me. And she said, don't cry, Mummy, that boy was a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you're very fancy. It sounds like you're raising uh, Mary Poppins. It sounds like she's... Uh... I recommend having a British child. It's like having a tiny and effective butler at home. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned a uh, failed relationship there. So are you single again now? I am out of the game. I'm going to remain single in time the age that Celine Dion is now. Wow. Yeah. And she's an entire O.J. Simpson prison sentence and a half older than I yeah, am. Yeah. Is that how you measure time these days? By O chunks of O.J. time? Yeah, she's like a <laughs> Kylie Jenner older than I am. You know, and I just think women have this pressure. People... I got a lady on the school run. Do you know Jane from North London? Anyone? <laughs> She's always like, oh, you're running out of time to have another baby. Wow, so she's putting the pressure on you. This woman is on my dick. Wow. She's like... <laughs> she's in charge of the cake sale, and she's very handsy with that. She wants me to always be a part of it. Catherine, will you do the cake sale? She's got seven children, by the way. Yeah. She's got a cervix like a hula hoop. Just... <laughs> whoom, whoom, you know, having a baby every four months. Not the snack, not the delicious snack Not the small hoop. hula hoop. Oh, no. one you wear around the... Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> But that's fine. If you work, that's fine. If you stay home with your kids, whatever. But Jane's like, do the cake sale, Catherine. Yeah. I will not, because the last time I helped Jane, she sold my cupcakes for 10p. <laughs> and my time is more valuable than that. I was like, <laughs> are we selling these cakes for Bangladeshi kids or two Bangladeshi kids, Jane? <laughs> Where are you getting your price point? Are, you, are your cakes good, though? Or, or was she factoring in that they weren't great cakes? Maybe she tasted one and thought 10p is actually quite a high price point for these. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I was just... I, I wrote her a check for £100 this year. I told her, you piss off and make a thousand cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see how you like it. Right, uh... Uh, now, your face or mine is on Comedy Central. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a very funny show, you and Jimmy Carter together. And that's why I was asking about relationships, because a lot of the time you do seem to be almost... Uh... No, we're not dating. No. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I think, great for you. <laughs> <laughs> how do you enjoy working with Jimmy? I, uh, I love Jimmy. We're also doing Roast Battle for Comedy Central. That's coming out soon. I think he's very professional. He gets it done quickly. I like him. He's a grafter like me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you are a grafter, though. You work really hard, don't you? Thank you, yes. <laughs> it was a compliment, and it was taken as one. I'm pleased it was. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I just feel that I worked this hard when I worked at Hooters. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> well, people think that's a joke, but you did work at Hooters, no, didn't I did you? work at Hooters. <laughs> and, um, uh, people in the UK don't always know what it is. It's just, like, a family restaurant. Well, it's not... Yeah. <laughs> It's an owl sanctuary. There. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we've said this thing, but are you dating? Are you dating? Do you like dating British men? I have only dated like. Well, I was going to say one British man, but then I have to lie a bit so as not to identify anyone. So like, I've dated a few British men, and 
One of them was a monster. Um, <laughs> I was dating a boy for a while, and then he moved to Japan, which I feel is overkill, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's a long way to go. Right? Like, yeah. go to Bristol. I won't follow you. <laughs> <laughs> you come anywhere outside my immediate postcode, I'm coming off the pill. <laughs> like, I'm really lazy. Have you used any of the... <laughs> Have you used any of the dating apps? Because uh, the young people I know them. To me, you're a young person still. So young, you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, there's Tinder, of course. Uh, there's uh, Grinder for gay men. And there's a new one called uh, Bumble. Have you yeah. used any of those, uh, of the other ones? No. You wouldn't no. do online dating like that? I wouldn't because, I guess, my daughter is eight years old. And I'm acutely aware that she's only mine for a little while longer. She'll be off, like, doing her own thing. And I won't be pressured by people like Jane, who tell me, I gotta settle down and have another baby. I don't. Yeah. You're, you're running out of time. We're all running out of time. It's Jane, she said she's North London. She sounds like she's from the deep south. <laughs> <laughs> you're running out of time, honey. That's what she sounds like. That's what she says to me. I'm like, Jane, I have more time than you, because I don't have to help find 14 tiny shoes every morning. Yeah. And I don't have to sleep with your husband, do I? <laughs> I fuck him because I want to. No, I <laughs> I, I um, imagine we've changed Jane's name for the sake of this story, haven't we? I've learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you love being a mum and you love being with your daughter, and that's a lovely thing. So I just am not... I, I bought a house by house, I mean home by home, I mean flat. Yeah. And then I think that I'm, I'm acutely aware that my grandmother wouldn't have been allowed to do that or have a bank account or carry a passport without the signature of a man. And so I just felt it was really amazing to me to have a property and to put my daughter in the property as an immigrant single mom and just be like, yeah. So now I'm decorating it. That's what my tour show, Glitter Room, is loosely about, just the trials and tribulations of having builders come in the house and be like, no, you can't have that. If you have that, no man will live here. Is that what they said That's to what you? they said to me. And I was like, really? Get it on the wall. Hurry up. What, <laughs> what were you hoping to put on the wall that elicited that response, though? Well, there is a glitter room. So a glitter room is, I think, would be a welcome thing. Thank you. I so, mean, you're right on my style. I think you would like my house. So hold it. It's glitter. It's a, like a glitter ball, or the whole, all the walls are glittery. It's all of that. It's Violet's room. She wanted glitter walls and a glittery carpet and a glittery ceiling and a glittery ball. Wow. And when I was explaining that to a builder, he looked me in the face and he said, "When will the decision maker be home?" Wow. <laughs> By which he meant Violet, your eight-year-old yeah. daughter. Yeah. <laughs> like, girl, she's at school for two more hours. So. <laughs> so the tour has started. It was just about to start. It starts on Thursday, I believe. I started the okay. tour. Um, I took half term off because. Like you, I take Halloween very seriously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the tour resumes on Thursday. And so does your daughter go and see you live? Can you tour? Do you take her with you ever or do you leave her here? And... I do take her sometimes. Annoyingly, now that she's eight years old, she has a really busy social schedule mm -hmm. and she needs to go to school and things like that. Yeah, it's irritating. But I do take her some of the weekends and uh, she sings at the end sometimes. Hold on, but your material is fairly... It's quite adult. Yeah. And so... She's not allowed to watch the show. Oh, I see. She doesn't see the show. See, when she was a baby, and we'd have to tour around and times were tough, she would sleep. I would look at her. She'd fall asleep on the other side of the curtain with a little pillow, and she wasn't listening to me anyway. And then every once in a while, she'd roll over, and, a, like, an arm would flop out onto the stage. <laughs> like, just a baby's arm, and I'd have to, like, just slide it back in with my foot. Uh, Catherine, so lovely to see you again. You can stick around for the rest of the show, I know. The fabulous Catherine Wire, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.